You should never judge a book by its cover. But this is a video game. When I was a kid, I had the weirdest games. This was pre-internet time, so I didn't know about Chrono Trigger or Metroid. I was out here getting biker mice from Mars, okay? And the Toy Story game, and they both had isometric racing, which is not a good idea. Why did I have biker mice from Mars instead of Zelda? Cool box art. Carnage. This is another one I had as a kid because a look at that box man is so red. There's like an evil demon on there with a Spider-Man. Even the cartridge is red, so you know it's good. As an adult, I look at this box art and all I see is the LJN logo. The cover art for Pac-Man 2, on the other hand, not, not quite as good. Bronchi the Branchosaurus. This was intended to be the Gex Killer. Bronchi would teach little kids about asthma. See his little inhaler there? What they didn't expect was that Gex team had already recruited the greatest designer in the biz, Dantel Indigo. Needless to say, the cover art for Gex was exactly correct and even funnier than the game. Box art was generally much better back in this era. You had these beautiful hand-drawn illustrations, even for Aerobiz, compared to now where you can only have black, white, and a shadow man on the front. It's like the marketing team is saying to the consumer, don't worry, there are no original ideas here. Super Mario Bros. 3 is one of the all-time iconic box arts because of its simplicity, yellow background, cool logo, and a very stylized drawing of Mario with these thick lines. That minimalist design was a much bolder choice back in the day where covers were very busy and colorful and was typically reserved for games that didn't need marketing, like Zelda, Sonic and Knuckles, Mortal Kombat, Halo 2 doesn't even say halo on the front it just says two you know what game this is bitch discover two right i forgot what it was however you can't apply the same strategy to 3d balls because nobody knows what that is Nobody is going to tell Santa they want balls for Christmas. It's hard to pinpoint what makes a cover great. It's gotta have that drama, but it can't be too complicated. It's gotta be clean, but it can't be boring. A truly great work of art has the ability to transport you to another place entirely. And if you listen carefully, you can even hear the image. Now look at Donkey Kong. The colors just jump off the box with these beautiful 3D models draped in the shadows of glossy foliage. Diddy Kong is hanging on for dear life on the Rambi who has this rough rhino skin texturing. This is one of my favorite covers even though Donkey Kong has hot dog fingers. Tauka Glow on the other hand, not quite as good as the Lawn Mower Man cover art. Spider-Man for PS4, this is fine. This, there, there he is on a red background, but now let's take the same idea to the next level. Bow! Look at that! Spider-Man crawling up the building with his reflection in the glass and you can see all the way down to the street. Such a great use of perspective. There is a sense of place and scale, yet Spider-Man remains the focal point. And the graphics. Here's a game from Infogrames called Alone in the Dark 2. What a majestic cover. Let's go ahead and slap a big stupid ass sticker on there. Jack is back, baby. I don't know what the fuck that means. Cover art can be a great way to differentiate your game in the marketplace. If every game has a dude with a gun, you can be the game that has a spider with a gun and a knife. Take Duke Nukem. Everyone knows this game is a Doom knockoff, so to combat this image, they designed their cover art to be a one-to-one -one copy of Doom. Castlevania! <laughs> what incredible artwork on these games. Until you hit this one. No, it's it's not worse than Biofreaks, right? But it's not on par with the Dino City now, is it? It's just some default looking anime characters with very little attitude. It's better than Russell Grant's astrology, but it isn't good like Donkey Kong. Where things really start to get messed up though is on the DS version of the game because it was already on the DS, but then on the 3DS version, it's really starting to get very little. And then on the Switch version, it's what the hell? Nobody's going to buy this over 
One of my biggest no-nos are templates. Capcom did it, Konami did it, Sega really did it. The Master System cover art. This is where creativity goes to get murdered. These are an abomination. Imagine your entire collection of games, all with identical grid backgrounds. Gary Kitchen was one of the great game designers, like Tim Clancy, that really understood the allure of mystery. What is the free offer? You have to buy the game to find out. That's the genius of it all. Who is this man on the cover art of Columns 3, and why is he also on Sonic? For the game Odama, nothing is left to the imagination. You look at the artwork and go, okay, yes, I understand what kind of game this is. Bonus microphone included. Obviously, this is a racing game. Titles will often have different cover art depending on which region they are released in. In Japan and Europe, Phalanx is some kind of spaceship game, but in North America, we know that it is actually a game about an old man with a banjo. I think it's a lot of fun to go through your favorite games and compare the artwork to other regions, see how they take different approaches to make the game appealing. Sometimes we're out here whooping their ass, other times we got fucking smoked. Like really bad, like damn. Here is the Japanese box art for Mega Man 1. The first thing you are going to notice is that they spell the Mega Man wrong, but this is fixed by writing it in English so Japanese people won't know. The artwork itself isn't bad, it's not great, but then you realize it was pretty good actually. <laughs> Not only does the American art hit you with the Capcom template, but Rockman also shows up. Now here's the European version. What the hell, no bonus microphone? Let's do a test. Boom, boom. Which one of these do you prefer? We're just walking down the Hall of Fame now. Here's a beautiful design by the guy who does Kanye's merch. What? <laughs> Well, that's just green Pac-Man eating a purple apple. <laughs> what the fuck is Cheggers? Hey, 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 hiya, it's me, Cheggers. The last one I want to talk about is Bust a Move, which is actually a very fun, well-made game. And here's the box art. And what's fucked up about this is that it's actually a significant improvement over the box art for the PS1 version, where this guy's eyes are in jail. To bring things to an even further degree of fuckery, there is also a game called Bust a Groove. Hey, So when you ask your grandma for the cute bubble popping game with the dinosaur and she is faced with this or this, she will probably gravitate towards the game called Super Bubble Pop. Or she might get Bubble Bobble which has the correct dinosaur but it's a completely different game unless they're using this cover art which is a fucking disgrace. At which point your grandma says fuck this shit. Go ahead and give me uh, one copy of Russell Crowe's Astrology.